afternoon, everybody. Uh, and thank you for coming to this talk about uh, idea generation. And thank you especially to the Code Motion team and Ladies at UX to invite me to come here today. Um, this Code Motion is being fantastic, so I hope you enjoy this, this talk. Um, just to quickly introduce myself, uh, my name is Marta Perez, and I currently work in Telefonica R&D as a user and design researcher in a project called Aura, which is a disruptive artificial intelligence project. Uh, you may know Telefonica probably more by its commercial names, as it trades as O2 in UK and Germany, uh, Movistar here in Spain and Latin America, and Vivo in Brazil. So first of all, um, what is this project that I was talking about? What is Aura? Aura is Telefonica's artificial intelligence in the form of a, a virtual assistant. You can talk to Aura by voice, you can interact with her by text or in a tactile way. And its objective is to change the relationship that we have with our users, to improve the relationship, to have a more personalized experience, to give them control over their data. So it's a very exciting project. So now is when you think, OK, but if you are talking about artificial intelligence and virtual assistants, what this has to do with, with ideation, with ideas? So the objective of the talk today is to share my experience in this journey and to show you the importance of idea management from fast-moving consumer goods to artificial intelligence projects. So I would like to start with a thought that I had a few years back. Uh, some time ago, uh, innovation and success meant that you had a lot of data. You had information about trends in the industry. Uh, you have information about your customers. But the game has changed. And now with the rise of big, big data, um, we are overwhelmed by it. Uh, everything is about data, 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 and you know it better than anybody else. But the point is that today, having data is, is not enough anymore because it is sold, it is bought, and companies trade with it as with any other good. So what is next? Ideas. Since you were aware of the title of the talk, I, I guess this doesn't come as a shock. But yes, ideas. I have always been really fascinated by the power of ideas to turn insights into products, services, brands, technology applications, and today even data models. Because ideas are the fuel, they trigger innovation, and they have this power that if they are implemented and launched to the world, they are able to change behaviors, habits, um, even the way we see the, the world itself. But there is a problem. And the point is that in spite of its power, the, the importance that we can think ideas have, most organizations still struggle to generate high quality ideas. So for the past six years, I've been focused my research interests in understanding why companies, especially multinationals and technology-driven companies, struggle to generate high-quality ideas, and how, how can we change that? But that comes a little bit later. So quite often, when we think about ideas, we think about creativity, advertising, designers. Uh, we think about ideas as these crazy part of blue sky thinking. But it's not just about that. Uh, most companies can benefit from an idea management process, whether they are, ja they are developing products, uh, physical or digital, services, technologies, or artificial intelligence. And um, why is this? Because sometimes you can have a lot of a lot of data, but it doesn't have it doesn't have power by itself. Let's say, 
if you don't make the most of it, if you don't come up with valuable ideas about the data that you have, it becomes useless. I know this is very controversial because nowadays when we think about data, we think about something very powerful, very relevant, and it is, but not on its own. So just to give you an, an example, um, if you open your, your cupboard in your kitchen and you have plenty of ingredients, or, or even better, a supermarket, you go to the supermarket and you have these hundreds of ingredients, if you don't deploy your creativity to mix these ingredients, to create this delicious meal, they, they don't have that much value, they are not that useful, right? So you'll end up just boiling some pasta and pouring some tomato sauce and that's it. And in this metaphor, this is what happens with most companies. If you don't put this creativity and this ideation in shape to generate ideas, they are going to use the data that they have, but in a very simple way. So at the beginning of my journey, I came across this, this study which is carried out every 10 years. And these writers, what they do is to analyze what are the trends and drivers in new product development uh, and innovation. And w the last time that they did it, they found that uh, there was a problem in new product development. Processes were becoming very, very systematic, so this had a negative impact on the levels of creativity of outcomes. So they made this very clear call on the importance of having a, an idea management process if companies wanted to succeed the next decade. So it wasn't just about the processes and the data, but about the ideas that they generated. So basically, it was more about the performance and the practice, not that much about uh, strategy and policies. So at this point, uh, I had my personal working experience working with these organizations and seeing it for myself that they were struggling to generate uh, quality ideas that could go to successful products and services in the market. And I had come across this previous study. So what I did next was to start looking to what had been out there. And this is a, a table that I summarize the work of the last 60 years. All of these are uh, design-driven innovation models. And what I found when I saw all of these, these plenty of studies, is that uh, when it comes to design-driven innovation, people have been talking about the same things over and over, over these different decades. The only difference was that they were giving it different names, but they were talking about the same thing. But what was more amazing for me was that at the core of all of these models, and you, as you can see in the circle, it was idea generation and ideation. So even over the past 60 years, we have known the importance of ideas. So then again, in that case, if we know that ideas are so important, why do organizations still struggle to generate them? But before we get into that, uh, I would like to make this clear. What do we mean by, by idea quality? What is a good idea? What do we mean by that? So I started looking and I found that uh, quality in ideas had been also explored from very different points of view. And there were plenty of parameters out there. So what I wanted to do was to synthesize it. If we have like these dozens of parameters of idea generation, do they have something in common? Can we synthesize them in something simpler? And I found that actually you could group them in three only metrics, which are um, uniqueness, feasibility, and business fit. But zooming out, a bit, if we are talking about idea generation practices, what are the current challenges, challenges that we are facing in that specific situation? What is happening exactly there? 
Uh, these are the four main challenges that I have found. The first one is this tendency to undertake very informal practices. And probably many of you have experienced this situation, like we have to do an idea generation, just grab a pack of post-its, some pens, and just get into this room. Generate as many ideas as possible. You know, so something very right here, right now, let's do it. Um, the second issue is this over-reliance on group brainstorming. There are many, many idea generation tools, but group brainstorming is the one that is used the most. Not because it's the most effective one, but because usually it's the only technique that people know. Thirdly, um, there is usually a lack of idea evaluation criteria. So if you are generating ideas, but you don't have an idea to rank them against, you tend to fall into opinions. Well, this is the idea that I like the most, or you fall in love with your own idea, because if you have to choose the one that is going to move forward, probably you will vote for your one. It's something natural, I would say, in human beings. You want your idea to come first. And the last one is this um, lack of appreciation of group facilitation. When we are having an idea generation session, the person that is running the session has to be the right person as well, because it has to manage people, it has to manage the time, it has to have knowledge about the project. So we shouldn't overlook this role. So now, let's get into the one of the important issues of the, of the talk today. What are the key constructs that we need to, to take into account to generate quality ideas? What are these key elements that we have to focus on? The first one is a, a iterative idea generation that combines both individual and collective uh, thinking. In my case, for example, in Aura, we have people in our team, um, designers, programmers, um, data scientists, prototypers, uh, product managers, so a very multidisciplinary team. So in our case, for example, it, was, it works really well when people generate ideas individually and then share them and develop them as a team. Why is this beneficial or why do I think this, this works? Because that way, you don't have uh, one person that is monopolizing and speaking out all the time, and it doesn't allow other participants to participate, to speak out. And this is very important because sometimes when we have an idea generation sessions, we have different profiles in people. We have more introvert people, more extrovert people. So when you enable this time of reflection and individual thinking, that gives them the opportunity to speak out in a way. And also, since we are coming from very different backgrounds, when we generate ideas and we put them in common, when we share them, we can bring everybody's knowledge and expertise. And when we put them together, we can develop them as a group. So this also helps to prioritize them. The second construct is to pursue quality over quantity. And I know that this might sound as a cliche, but it's not about the, the quantity, but the quality. Um, a few years ago, I was working for BSKB in the UK, and they wanted to have this roadmap for the next five years, and they hired a consultancy to help them generate ideas. So they had plenty of sessions over the course of six months. Then I started working with them, and what they did was, here, Marta, here's the, the ideas that we have generated, 93. Now you have to tell us which ones are good, which ones are not, rank them, and evaluate them. And out of those 93 ideas, there were only two that fit with these criteria that were useful for the organization. So for, for Sky, it was a waste of resources and time. So many sessions, so many people being there just for two ideas. So at that point, 
they realized that these um, informal practices and this group brainstorming was not useful, and they really needed to have an idea management process. So uh, I worked with them a year and a half to, to do this. And the thing is that sometimes when we generate ideas, and it's all about just generate as many as you want, sometimes, sometimes that also generates fr frustration, because you, we are generating ideas that at the end of the session just get discarded. So the next time that you are going to go to a, an ideation, you are like, no, I'm not going to go, you know, it's not useful. I don't see what is going to happen next with these ideas. So when you focus more on quality of the ideas, it also keeps people more motivated. So they know, like, they have a very clear objective. The next one is preparation for innovation. This is really, really important. Planning and preparation, for me, is one of the most important aspects. Um, Procter & Gamble uh, spends six weeks to prepare for an idea generation workshop. Six weeks, a month and a half. It seems like too long, but they take the time to identify what is the problem that they are going to tackle, um, who is going to attend, what are the relevant profiles to come to this session, to choose the facilitator, to develop a facilitator plan, uh, to choose the right activities and dynamics. So now it seems like a lot of work, so it shouldn't be overlooked. In our case, for example, in, in Telefonica, um, we also take the time to choose the facilitator because you need a person, uh, when it comes to idea generation, that is able to manage the people, to manage the timings in the session, that is able to keep everybody focused so they don't go off scope, and to keep the momentum and the, um, the passion, let's say, in the, in the idea generation session. And since you are going to have all these busy people for an hour and a half, you have to come up with these dynamics and these activities that are going to make the most of the people and the time in the room. And what is also very important uh, beside within all this preparation time is uh, choosing the right participants. Choosing people that have different levels of expertise, they have different backgrounds, so they can bring very different skills and knowledge to the table. Uh, like I was saying before, no? very different roles, more technical roles, more creative roles. But besides that, what we have done several times, and we have seen that it works really well, in fact, I consider it a, a best practice, is to bring your users to your idea generation sessions. So if you are developing a product or a service, it's not that crazy that you bring your users to generate ideas, because that way, when you are ideating and you have them, you are going to see if they like them, if it's relevant for them, and you can co-create with them and develop them. So this works really, really well. Uh, what is important as well? To set this idea quality criteria. If we go to an idea generation session and we have no idea of the quality, it becomes more difficult to achieve it because you don't know what you are ideating for. So, for example, if we are um, generating ideas, let's say, for a new feature that we need to develop in the short term, viability should be really important for us. So if people start generating ideas that are long term, they are about technologies that haven't yet developed, etc., they just go out of focus and it's, gonna be, it's not going to be useful. Besides, having this idea evaluation criteria keeps people focused because they, they know what they are ideating for. And when it comes to evaluating the ideas, at the end of the session, we have a more democratic conversation. Because sometimes what happens is that 
uh, people tend to go to these idea generation sessions, and at the end of it, they, they leave the room thinking, okay, so now what? We've been here two hours, we have developed these ideas, but we don't know what, what is going to happen with them. And sometimes um, it falls into this situation where the person um, with most power in the room or the managers are the ones that say, okay, let's go for this idea. And that also decreases the motivation for people to attend these sessions. So this way, if they have this very clear idea of the evaluation, it removes subjectivity and they understand the decisions that are being made. Another aspect to consider is to design bespoke visual templates. When you look at um, ideation, you will find a lot of um, templates and canvases that are very useful for idea generation or for user journeys, for problem definition. But when it comes to these technology-driven projects uh, which have high levels of uncertainty or disruptive innovation, uh, I find it very difficult to stick to what's out there. So usually what I do is to design these visual templates that tackle exactly the challenges that we want to, to achieve in the, in the session, in the idea generation session. So when we are having these very technology-driven projects, what we are going to see as well is that when we think about idea generation, mm, there are not so many things out there that we have to, that we can rely on or we can inspire. So we have to develop our own. And one of the benefits of this is that when people come to the idea generation sessions, every time they come, they are going to have different templates. So it keeps them motivated. Because what, we have, uh, what I have seen as well is that if you have like the same you know, template and people just come and fill it out and it's always the same, it becomes very systematic. What I was saying at the beginning about these new product development processes, you know, it's always the same. I come, I fill this, I leave it. So you can deploy your creativity also in this, in this area. Um, another theme is to develop high quality stimulus data, to have this ground insight driven thinking. What I mean by stimulus data is these uh, pieces of information of uh, see, pieces of information of um, analyze data. Sometimes um, we know it that in our organizations uh, people are undertaking research activities and there are plenty of reports and PPTs all over the place. So how can we make all of that information that we have, all of that knowledge usable? So it can be stimulating and inspiring when we go to idea generation sessions. Uh, some time ago, I was working with Nokia in the UK, and as many large organizations, they had this problem. They had been doing all of these research activities, these reports over the years, and they had like tons of documents, but they wanted to make them usable. What, when we go to an idea generation session, we are not going to read all of this to generate ideas, but we have a lot of knowledge within the company. So what we did was to analyze all of that information, and we came up with these, like a game, like these little cards that had the distill analyze information. So we had uh, cards with trends about economic trends, about technology trends, about behavior trends. Uh, we had information about different profiles of people that were target for, for Nokia. So this became like a toolkit that when they had idea generation sessions, instead of bringing those reports, they will just come with the key elements, with the key insights that were useful for that idea generation session. So that became very useful for them. The point is that when we think about um, stimulus data, one of the key benefits is that it's able to break down 
very complex information. In this case, for example, uh, this image is from one of our workshops. A few weeks ago, we were generating ideas around data models. So I was saying at the beginning, you may have a lot of data, but how do we combine them? What can we do with it? So what we did we was to come up with this idea of having these Lego pieces, and in each of one of them, there was a piece of data. So what you would do was to mix them up and come up with ideas on how to bring this data together to bring value to the user. So that was really, really fun. And finally, uh, one thing that we have to take into account in idea generation is to, to use a common terminology. Just because we speak the same language, it doesn't mean that we understand each other. And when we have very different teams with very different levels of expertise or knowledge, sometimes we use the same words, but we don't mean the same thing. Sometimes we even mean the opposite thing. Um, in Sky, as well, uh, when we were developing this idea management process, we found out that for, what, for some teams, idea meant one thing and concept meant the other. So when we had to develop this innovation process, it was really difficult to, to have teams to communicate with each other because they didn't mean the, th the same things. So what we did was to develop this glossary, very, very simple. But people, when they came to the team or they came to the idea generation sessions, they were very clear about when we were talking about ideas, what did it mean? When we were talking about concepts, what did it mean? And I have found that this is really useful in any organization. In, in technology companies, besides, if we are talking about, um, if we are having sessions or meetings or idea generation sessions with people that are more technical, that are less technical, it's important. <coughs> Sorry. It is important that everybody is on the same page. So, for example, in my in my team in Aura, uh, we have also developed like a glossary of terms. So when we are talking about insights, um, intents, categories, domains, ideas, everybody knows what we are talking about. And why do I think this is very important? Because you can be very creative, you go to an idea generation session, and you come up with the best idea in the world. And you explain it to people. And if people don't understand what you mean by certain terms or concepts, they might not get you. So at the end, you have this amazing idea, but you are not able to come across its value. So having a common terminology really helps with that. So the title of this talk was about how to generate quality ideas to deliver business impact. So what is the business impact of, of everything that uh, I've been talking here today? We've been talking about this common uh, design-driven innovation models. We've been talking about uh, how do we define quality and what is a quality idea. And we have seen the constructs to develop a quality idea, all these things that we have to take into account when generating ideas. So what happens when we apply this to, to different projects in different organizations? What we have seen is that it improves the quality of ideas we have seen a 20% better quality ideas. What do we mean by quality ideas? We have seen it um, mm, viable, feasible, uh, unique, and they have a fit with the business strategy. We have compared the results of previous idea generation sessions and idea generation practices. And then when we have test this framework, this is the benefit that the companies have, have had with it. So what is the impact of this? That when they generate ideas and this keeps um, going from one level to the other and end up in the market, that has a revenue for the company. That increases the motivation of teams. That makes um, 
that helps to generate a more innovation and idea-driven culture within the company. So this is all for today. Thank you very much for, for listening. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And I think we have some time for questions. Hello. Thank you, Marta, first. Really interesting and inspiring presentation. Uh, I was thinking of uh, about getting ideas of what's the mindset change you need to apply to the company. And if it should be just narrowed down to this kind of uh, idea generation framework or workshops, or if we should apply something, I mean, uh, some mindset change in the company in, for all the workers, for us to be uh, able to raise our ideas. And that's the first part, but the second question is, you were focused more on the how to uh, improve these uh, practices, but how do we manage these kind of uh, great ideas? We added that it has the three points that, it, uh, that are valuable ideas. How do we manage that until they give the improvement to the business or mm -hmm. in the company? OK. Thank you. Good question. How, um, how do we do this in the companies? When I have worked more with very big companies, so as we all know, we have oof, very um, different teams, different projects, different departments. Uh, so it becomes very difficult to have something global within the company. So what I have seen is that um, people start believing in idea generation when they experience it. So if you have, um, imagine, a very technical team, and they come to the idea generation session, and it's the first time that they come to one, or they have been in some of them, and they have lost faith in the value of the ideation, um, I think is learning from experience. When they come and they experience that they have generated ideas that um, it's going to be useful for them. Like in this, uh, imagine in this workshop of data models, people from data scientists, cognitive, uh, they were like, hmm, ideation, I don't know. But at the end of the workshop, uh, they were like, okay, if we hadn't done that, we, we couldn't think about all these ideas that now we can develop in our uh, data mining. So when you do that, then one person from that team is going to tell person from another team. And now we are developing another three workshops from different teams of linguistics, um, developers, prototyping. So it's a word of mouth. If you start doing something that works, yeah, the word gets passed on. So I think that is the, the best way to do it. Just learning from experience and people see that that works. That is not something just like about getting into a a room and generating crazy ideas. And the second question, um, uh, in depends on the company. If we are talking about uh, long-term ideas, if we are developing a roadmap, or if we are generating ideas for the short term. So for the short term, it's very, it's very simple, because you can see when you are ideating and you are having these parameters, which ones are the quick wins, which are the ones that we had to strengthen, maybe some of the technology, or we need some pieces of information about the target customer or about the behaviors of our users. So we have combined that with some UX research or secondary research, etc. And then when we are talking about um, long-term ideation, um, the effectiveness of that, mm, just having a very clear map about what is that we are going to develop in the short term, in the medium term, and in the long term, and then to see if we can develop those methodologies. That is the, the way that I would say. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for the session. It was really interesting. I have two questions. The first one, um, you've mentioned the importance of uh, brainstorming or uh, ideating uh, 
individually and in group? How do you combine both? Because in group, I understand group sessions, but mm -hmm. how do you manage individual ideas? And the second question is about motivation. Um, you said that if you have these sessions and then you never know what happens with the ideas, the people get uh, not very motivated. How do you feedback about the ideas that got implemented to the group? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, what was the first one? Ah, yeah, uh, individual and collective thinking. Uh, that doesn't mean that people think uh, individually all the sessions, so we bring the team, all the team to the to the room, but they have uh, split activities. So we launch like the first challenge, and we are like, okay, now you have 10 minutes to think individually. So people just write uh, on their post-its or whatever, and they are focused on that. And when they finish, we are like, okay, now uh, you are in small teams, and now you are going to have another 10 minutes, 20 minutes to share the ideas with the team. And in that case, what they do is that they share their ideas, these are the ones that I have come up with, and sometimes we see that there is a fit in them. So in that case, what they do is to work together to strengthen them. As I was saying, like they bring like different levels of expertise and knowledge. But um, it's like within the same session, we have like different activities, and some of them are individual, and some of them are collective. And the second question was? Uh, what I like to do is to, at the end of all the sessions, to share what are the results with everybody that has participated and what are the next steps. So we keep everybody in the loop. And when they see that some of those ideas, if they have selected uh, two, imagine for the session, uh, to keep them in the loop of what is happening with them. So they see that there is an evolution, even if they are from a different team, but just giving some feedback about Okay, you remember the session that we had three months ago? Those ideas that came up in that session, we are implementing them and they are in this stage. So they see the value of that, those two hours that they went to the session. So they see that, okay, there is, there is a follow up on that. Thanks. Over there? Thank you. So what is different in a process of idea generation in a startup and a big company? And also, how can people be stimulated to have better idea? Mm -hmm. um, I have my experiences mostly in multinationals, so very good big companies. But when I have tried this framework in more small and medium a medium-sized um, companies, it works the same. Because you are always going to have multidisciplinary teams, people with different levels of expertise, and you know the things that we have talked today about the pursuing quality, uh, preparation for innovation, it works the same. So you can follow the same methodologies. That doesn't change. And the second one was? Um, well. Uh, in the session itself, uh, when you have different profiles of people, maybe some people have never been in an idea generation session, or maybe they have. But what I like to do first is to take like 10 minutes to, to make people realize that they are all in the same page and they are all creative. So I usually prepare like some warm up activities. Uh, because it's very, it's very common that when people come to, to ideation sessions, they are like, oh, but I'm not creative, I don't know how to draw. Don't worry, we are not drawing here. And even if we are, we are all able to draw a circle, a triangle, you know, a square, so that is not important. So just making some activities to start warming up people and to relax because sometimes people come a little bit tense because they don't know what is going to happen. They are just afraid of this creative session. So having that. And then um, when we are designing the dynamics uh, in the session, uh, taking into account also the profiles of people. So guiding a little bit the thinking. If we are... Um, having very open thinking, but then we have to close, like having 
convergent and divergent thinking in the activities. So when you design the, um, the activities and the dynamics, you have to think like, okay, this one is too open. The next one is too close. The one is too open. Next one is too close. So you can keep the flow of people because if you have, uh, for example, very technical people, they start feeling a little bit anxious if they see like things open. Okay, but what do we do with this? So the next activity, you close and they relax. And the next one you open and then you close. So that keeps people motivated because if they are very technical, they see that they are getting something valuable. So that is not going very off topic or very creative and then they don't know what to do. So at the end of the session, it's really important to have something like a very clear deliverable of the session. So next time they will feel motivated to come back. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, just a quick question. I think it's kind of related to already one of the ones which you answered. Um, well, let's imagine a scenario where you have a couple of people uh, generating ideas, and you kind of figure out that one person's ideas are absolutely ridiculous. And But you can't tell them to directly, hey, this is stupid. You just can't say that. And then they keep doing it, and they don't realize. And I mean, everybody thinks their idea is the one of the best ideas ever. Mm -hmm. Do you, at some point, pull them out and say, like, this is not working? Or do you address this in an open room, saying, like, hey, whoever is doing this, stop it? Or how do you handle those things? Mm -hmm. uh, is there a better way to do this? Or um, When you have idea generation sessions, you have always very different personalities in the session. So the same that can happen that someone is just going off topic, or it's just um, breaking, like, or... Um, saying that the ideas of the others don't work and they are very destructive. In the, in the session, um, what I usually do is like if someone is going off topic, since we are having this very clear objective of the session and we have this idea evaluation criteria, is just to speak with the person like, okay, this is, this is great, but let's remember that we are going, imagine, we have to develop these feasible ideas or this is something similar to other things, so just guide the thinking. That is one of the, the tasks, let's say, of the facilitator, to guide everybody's thinking. And if someone is going super off topic, try to bring them back. But um, try that, not telling them to, to leave the room or anything, just trying to make it work, whether they are going off topic or um, they are being a little bit mean with other people's... Um, idea. So just having these rules at the beginning of the session really work. Like, okay, so we are not judging everybody's I ideas in this session. Uh, we have this objective. This is the criteria that we are going to follow. So we have like these rules that the facilitator can keep um, coming back to when we have someone that is going off track, let's say. Okay? Okay. If you have any questions, I'll be around later, so you can ask me wherever. <laughs> Thank you.